Okay, um, and we're gonna start with exponents. Uh, this is algebra two, semester two. Uh, we're starting uh, that first section one one. Uh, this is page five, but when you print it off that, that uh, link that I sent to teams, you print page one to five, and then we're gonna print page nine to 11, uh, both of these uh, section, both of these I'm going to try and cover today. If you don't have uh, either one of these printed, it's okay. Just um, you can work on that. Uh, but I'm going to give you a brief overview of what um, what to expect here. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so we've got uh, the first page. Um, this is very hard to see, isn't it? Okay, so. Uh, Properties of exponents, we're gonna simplify using uh, different operations. We're gonna do a little more advanced division and, and I want y'all more comfortable with these, uh, dealing with these powers and dealing with these negative exponents. And it's, uh, it's probably been a while since you've done something like that in algebra two or in algebra one. So I want y'all to be comfortable with that kind of stuff. Um, I want you to look at this and say, oh, well, I can do that. That's no problem. Um, you're fixing to learn more about exponents than you ever wanted to know. It's, it's going to be pretty, uh, uh, so let's see. I think I may have printed the wrong page here. Maybe not. Okay. Um, no, I think, I think I did print the wrong page. So the second section, I'll probably have to pause and go get that. Um, my printer is acting up. So, all right, let's go to um, algebra two exponents. Um, so we will begin the second half of our algebra studies, reviewing some basic properties uh, of exponents and radicals. We're going to do. Uh, um, we've we've done matrix operations, linear programming, data analysis, and quadratic functions, graphing, factoring, solving, and modeling. We've done all this. Um, you may not remember some of this, but we have done that. Now we're going to be going to exponents and radicals, polynomials, graphing, factoring, and solving, which we're pretty good with that already. Um, let's see, rational expressions, pretty good with that. And conic sections, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get to that. But we'll see. I got to this last year with my students, and uh, it was a pretty intense topic, but... Um, it's not something that you can't handle. I mean, you're algebra two, so you obviously can handle algebra a little bit. You can go, you've made it through algebra one. Some of y'all are in geometry. And uh, let's look at this, uh, this page, we're gonna have to keep coming back to over and over again. This is the second page of one, one point dash six. Uh, we're gonna talk about the product of powers um, and how that, how that uh, has a like base with exponents. So if I say the words like base with exponents, you will uh, add exponents. So you're gonna hear me say that a bunch. Like base with exponents, you add the exponents. So in this case, we'll add the three and the negative one, and everybody can do that, okay? So power of a power, that's gonna be like this. You're gonna have a base, but then you're gonna have an expo exponent or exponential term expression raised to an exponent. Um, so now I don't remember how I say that, but basically in this case, you would multiply the exponents. All right, um, I'm gonna say, uh, maybe pa the way I say that is power to uh, power. I don't know, I can't remember how I phrased that, but you're gonna hear me say words like that over and over again. All right, power of a product. So we're gonna have this and this. So in this case, if you'll notice, you've got AB to the M, AB all to the M. That means you can spread out the M like a distributive property. So this is, I'll say the words, like distributive property. Uh, 
All right. So it's a uh, matter of fact, it's like a reverse distributor property. So I'm going to put this. All right. Um, all right. Let's get a quotients here. You're going to subtract these exponents here. You have like bases. Um, like bases with exponents, uh, in, as far as division is concerned, you're going to be subtracting the exponents. That's very similar to this up here. I'll say like bases with exponents, subtract exponents, because you've got uh, a, a quotient going here. And the way I like to mention this is you see how that minus, that, uh, that division symbol looks kind of like a minus sign that helps me remember to subtract up here. Um, that's not a minus sign, so you would add, or it doesn't look like a minus sign. All right, so let's go to the next one here. It says power of a quotient. Um, trying to straighten up and clear it up here. All right, so we've got a uh, power of a quotient. So we've got a, a fraction raised to a power. So this is like distributed pro property again. So this is like, uh, you know, we'll just say reverse distributed property that these are the, there's a lot of rules with exponents and it's not easy to remember them all but once you've practiced it enough you get it this is going to be if you wrote this out this would be four, uh, <clears throat> four squared minus or divided by seven squared so it could be like am over am that's actually ooh, this is wrong that uh, this rule is wrong. It's supposed to be AM over BM. They made a mistake there. Uh, let's see, let's go to negative, negative exponents. Uh, we've got A to the negative. This is the one I really want you to understand right here. I'm gonna put a star by this one. Boy, this one's important, okay? Um, now, if you see a negative exponent, I'm gonna say something like bottom of the fraction. All right, so negative exponent, when you see a negative exponent here, a to the negative m, that means you're gonna put something on the bottom of a fraction. So you're gonna put a to the m on the bottom, but what's gonna go on top? A one, okay? So in other words, it's think of the word reciprocal here. Think of it like a reciprocal. Okay, now let's go to the zero exponent. Everybody, everybody knows that when you raise something to the zero power, uh, always one. It's always one when you raise something to the zero power. I never spend five seconds with the zero power. I just put one, okay? Don't bother with that. Um, this is the easiest thing in the world. So, so these are the phrases you're going to hear me say over and over and over again. Um, now we're going to go, uh, underneath each one of these, I'm going to put the answer to each one. So we're going to rewrite this. So in this case, it's going to be five to the two. But why is that? Because you've got three minus one, three and one, negative one added together makes negative two. You add the exponents here. Let's pull down and see what happens. Uh, here in this case, we're going to multiply the exponents because it's a power to a power. So we're gonna say it's a base three and the exponent is now gonna be six because you multiply those exponents. All right, this is reverse distributive property. I'm gonna say that several times. <clears throat> power of a product. So you're gonna take that four and give it to both terms here. In this case here, you're going to, you remember it looks like a subtraction sign in between. So you're gonna take your like base and you're gonna subtract the two exponents just like that. So negative three minus negative six, which turns out to be three. Okay, so that's six to the three power. And then this is also reverse distributive property. So we've got two, four squared over seven squared. And then down here, we've got um, seven to the negative two power, which is going to be, remember it's reciprocal. So it's gonna be 
one over seven squared uh, because of the negative exponent. And then when I rewrite that, it's one over 49, okay? And then down here, don't even think about it, the answer is one, okay? So if I've gone too fast for you, um, I'll come back to this at the end or I'll keep coming back to the sheet and you may, you may wind up seeing something that, I'm, that I've worked on, okay? So um, here we go. It's about to get busy. So um, this is pretty in, uh, gonna be pretty high intensity uh, speed because uh, a lot of this is gonna be very simple. And then when we get to the harder stuff, we'll just break it down into smaller chunks, all right? In this case, we've got a like base with exponents. That means we're going to add the exponents. So that means we're gonna say x to the two plus three. And then that means we have x to the fifth power, circle the answer every time, okay? So we had to add the exponents. And I'm gonna write the notes off to the side uh, of what you were supposed to do. Here we're going to multiply the exponents. Exponents are just powers. There's something raised to another power. Um, uh, let's see, or in other words, multiplied by itself. In this case, it's two times three. This is gonna be X multiplied by itself six times. All right. Um, Okay, um, x, y, or that's x times y to the third power. So remember, this is like reverse distributed property. So we're gonna say x to the third, y to the third. Done, easy. Next, let's move over here. This is more like a subtraction problem then it is a division problem, so we're gonna subtract the exponents. And then we're gonna say x to the fifth minus three. So that's gonna be x squared, circle that and you're done. Okay, so those four were pretty straightforward and easy. Now we get down to the harder stuff. All right, we're gonna do, uh, actually this is not hard, this down here is a little bit tougher. So right here, we're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna stop writing the notes off to the side here because we've already done this. Uh, this one, I will write the, the notes. This is a uh, reverse distributive property. So we're, gonna, uh, so we're gonna say X to the fourth, Y to the fourth. Done on that one, but this one uh, is exactly well, is exactly the same as this one up here. So we subtract the exponents. Now this one's got two, uh, two problems in one really, because you, you're, what you're gonna wind up with here is a negative exponent. And you remember the negative exponent. So let's write down both things. We do need to write down, subtract the exponents. Then I'm gonna put a bar and then we're gonna do it. So that's step one. Step two is going to be, uh, what did we say? How did I say I was gonna say this? Bottom of the fraction. So you could say reciprocal. So we're gonna put this on the bottom of the fraction. So in other words, this goes down here and what goes on top is a one and you're done. There's the answer. Okay, so this reduces down to this, they're equivalent. All right, let's move down. So we got two big problems coming up here. And uh, let's take the, the top and the bottom separately at first. Um, so let's deal with the top portion and then we'll, then we'll add in the bottom. Uh, after we, what I'm trying to get rid of here is the, the parentheses. So in this case, this is like distributive property. So you're going to say two times negative one, okay? And then you're gonna have two times, in this case, this is a one where the y is. So you're, you're multiplying those exponents, but you're doing it like in a distributive property frat fashion, okay? All right, so when we rewrite this, we get on top, we get, 
uh, x to, uh, to the negative one times two, and then y to the one times two. That's kind of how that looks. Now, uh, we're gonna get to the point where, like in this case, where we have this negative three, I'm gonna want you to automatically move that from the bottom to the top, because if you reverse, if you take the negative three power and move it up to the top, it becomes a positive three power. So you really could scrap that and then write y to the third up top. And I want you to do that without even thinking about it, okay? Um, let's go to the next part. So we've got two, now what's going on at the top? X to the negative two, you know what to do there, don't you? You move it down to the bottom. It's the reciprocal, it's a flip, all right? And so y is uh, one times two, which is two. So I'm gonna rewrite everything like it looks. So now, if you'll notice, um, you've got an X term over an X term and a Y term over a Y term. Well, you're supposed to do, there's a couple of ways to do this, and there's a really fast way to do this. The, um, I think the fastest way to handle this is to just go ahead and subtract these exponents and not move anything around, okay? All right, so we're obviously gonna start with a two in front, but what's gonna happen is we're not gonna have a fraction anymore. We're not gonna have this situation. What's gonna happen is these exponents are going to subtract from one another, and these exponents are gonna subtract from one another. Um, and so let's see what we get. Uh, over to the left, I'm doing some, uh, some uh, scratch work. Okay, so I'm gonna do some scratch work over here. So we've got X to the negative two minus two, and then we've got Y to the two minus three, or I'm sorry, minus negative three. So let's, uh, let's work both of these out. So what's X to the negative two minus two? Well, that's X to the negative four. Okay, and then Y to the two minus negative three, that's Y to the five. Now, what does this mean? What, why do we have a negative number and a positive number going on here? Um, so what you're gonna do is you're going to make a frac, you, I said you weren't gonna have a fraction, but you really have to in this case because you've got a negative exponent in your answer. And remember the word reciprocal. So we're gonna put all the positive values on top of the fraction. And this negative value is gonna get moved to the bottom of the fraction and become positive. So it's like, uh, it's just like when we did square roots, uh, we were uh, had quotients of uh, rat, uh, square root values. We had to have a rational denominator. Same thing here, you can't have a negative number on the bottom. Uh, you really have to have a uh, something workable like X to the fourth on the bottom. All right, so I know this was a lot, but this was a pretty simple problem compared to what's coming up. So you're, there's gonna be some problems where we involve all of these rules in the same problem, pretty much, okay? Let's go down here to this one, and remember we're gonna take it in chunks. If you want, you could, take, you could cover up that and deal with that part right there. Remember that's reverse distributive property, and then it also means reciprocal because you're going to uh, move it to the bottom. Um, hey, look, check that out. What do you think about that? Was this problem scary in the beginning or what? What is that? That is one. You don't need this at all. The zero power, I don't even think about that. I don't care what is there, make it a one. All right, now look how easy this looks. Okay, so now we're gonna do that reverse distributed property thing, and that means we're gonna do that with the two because it's got a parentheses around it. So it's gonna be two to the negative two power, and then x to the negative two power, that goes to both. And then we have that one there. I don't even need to worry about that one. It's gone. On the bottom, I'm gonna put x 
that's going to be obviously to the first power. So now all we have to do, let me show you a little, a little trick of the trade here. Okay. So we've got two to the two power. You know what that is? That's four, right? But this is a negative. So that means it's not four here. It's going to be four down here. All right. Uh, X to the negative two power that becomes X to the two power on the bottom. And look at what we got on the bottom already. X to the one power. And then look at what's left on top. Both of these things moved down because they were negative exponents. So there's going to be a one on top, just like the reciprocal rule. Now we're almost through here. Okay. All this was very simple. I chunked out that zero power thing and made it a one. It vanished. All we had to deal with was these two parts here, the reverse distributed property, and then we divided by X. So we've got uh, two negative power situations going on here. This is two to the two power, which is four, but it has a negative exponent, which means you need to move it down to the bottom. Okay, reciprocal. This has a negative exponent. It's X to the two power, but it needs to be on the bottom of the fraction. Uh, and this right here is almost through. All we have to do is deal with these two parts here. This is uh, uh, adding exponent situation here. So we're going to say four times X to the two plus one, four times X to the two plus one. That is one over four X to the third power. And there's the answer. Okay. Very straightforward. I know it's a lot to get there, but um, it's just if you take each little section one piece at a time and know what not to worry about, I don't even, when I see this, I don't even look at the one fourth. I look at the part that I need to work on. All right. So um, that's what makes these much easier to deal with. Let's look at um, simplify the expressions. So basically got the same situation going on here. We have a, uh, a power to a power. That means we're going to do reverse distributive property. Okay. Um, and so how is that going to look? So we're going to have a squared times three, or, uh, a to the two times three, then we're going to have B to the negative one times three <clears throat> on top. On the bottom, we're going to have two to the third power, uh, A to the third times three, and then B to the second times three. That's what's going on here. Every term gets multiplied, every exponent gets multiplied by three in this situation. This is a power to a power, so you multiply the exponents. Okay, so now if that's the case, I can take this in sections like this. I could say, okay, that's, that's just a to the sixth, and that's b to the negative three. All right, so let's write that down, a to the sixth, b to the negative three. Okay, down here at the bottom, I'm going to look at this only. Two to the third power, that's eight. A to the, uh, that's going to be a to the ninth power. And then this is b to the sixth power. So this is going to be eight. A to the ninth, B to the sixth. Now, all you have to do, think of this in sections here, okay? So this is, uh, obviously we've got one over eight as a fraction there. But in this case right here, we've got A to the sixth over A to the ninth. And I'm gonna look at that by itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and write the eight. I don't have to do anything with that. Now I'm going to, um, I really need to, an area for scratch work. So I want you to, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put scratch work over here to the side. And we're gonna put A to the six minus nine, and then we're gonna put B to the negative three minus six. That's, uh, that's what's happening here. So B to the negative three minus six, you're subtracting. Remember to think of this division symbol as a subtraction symbol in, that, in this case. So we've got a to the six minus nine, that's gonna be a to the negative three. <clears throat> and that's a to the negative three on top. <clears throat> and then right here, this is b to the negative nine. And that's gonna be b to the negative nine on top. So what does that mean? Okay, so if you take six and you subtract it from nine, you get negative three. 
If you take negative three and you subtract six from it, you get negative nine. So this should tell me that this, there's two steps here. You need to think the word reciprocal here because you've got negative exponents. So the way I would write this would be eight on the bottom, a to the three on the bottom. See how we move that down and it becomes positive? And then b to the negative nine becomes positive as well. So there's my final answer and there's nothing left on top. So the answer is one. All right, so I know this is messy, but uh, that's kind of the way things have to be at this point because we're working in a small space. Um, so now to stay organized, you're gonna have to know what you're doing before you start. So um, it would help to not have to write this stuff and give you more working room, but you've got to learn this material. So we have to write these things. So uh, we're gonna do the reverse distributive property again. Okay, um, and then we'll deal with what's coming next. I'm not, I can't remember what the step is next, so I'm, I'm just gonna work it out like I uh, normally would. So this is gonna be uh, C to the negative two up here, because you're, you're distributing that to that. The, now we've got D to the negative four, and then we're gonna multiply that by negative two, because we're, we're distributing that, okay? So now on top, we've got D squared over C. Now let's uh, rework this. So this is gonna be uh, C to the negative two. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move these C's and D's around to where they're underneath each other. So I'm just gonna do what's called the commutative property and flip this around and put that C over here. And then I'm gonna put the D square on top and then uh, over here on the bottom, I'm gonna put D to the uh, eighth power. <clears throat> because negative four times negative two is eight. So now you see how I can just basically move that around. That's called commutative property, all right? <clears throat> Commutative. So we're gonna be uh, C to the negative two plus one. Where'd the one come from? Right there, okay? I'm sorry, C to the negative two minus one. I made a mistake. That's a subtraction right there, guys, my bad. And then D to the two minus eight. So we're subtracting. Think of these uh, division bars as one big subtraction symbol, okay? <clears throat> now, so we've got negative two minus one, that's gonna be C to the negative three. And then D, uh, two minus eight is D to the negative six. So if I were gonna rewrite this, uh, I would move, <clears throat> now you need to do the word reciprocal flip that C to the negative three down on the bottom of your fraction. And uh, there should, should be a one on top. And then this D to the negative six goes down also, which becomes D to the sixth. And so your final answer is that, okay? So all of this mess right here turns out to be one over C times D to the sixth, okay? Now, it's helpful to remember uh, when we get down to this part right here, you remember how we talked about two to the third power? It's, easy, it's nice to memorize that two to the third power is eight. It need, you need to have this locked in your head, a lot of this, okay? Some of it I don't even have locked in my head yet. I can't remember some of these. But you know, the multiples of fives are for me a little bit easy. <laughs> but you know, it's good to remember these uh, automatically. So let's go down here and we're gonna use these powers for just a second and work on these positives and negatives. Um, okay, so let's look at this. So what's two to the two power? Bam, all right. What's negative two to the two power? So what this would be is <clears throat> negative two times negative two. That's gonna be a positive four also, okay? In this case right here, this, this is the one, I'm gonna put a star here and here because this is where everybody makes a mistake. Everybody makes this mistake, okay? <clears throat> you have a, 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 a parentheses around this negative two. That means you're gonna distribute the two to both terms. Both, so you're gonna have two negatives and two twos, right? 
So two negatives and two twos. In this case, I only have one negative. I, I'm not distributing that two to that. And two twos. So it's negative four for this answer, guys. You need to make sure that you put a star by those and don't forget those. You're, when you have parentheses here, then you would square the, the negative, but you're not doing that, okay? So let's go down here to the next one. Remember, we need to think the word recip, row call, and put uh, two to the two on the bottom of a fraction, just like that, okay? So that's gonna be one over four. And let's move down. Okay, so reciprocal. Okay, and so uh, you could put uh, negative two all squared on the bottom of a fraction. And then remember we said that in this case, since we have a parentheses, you're gonna have two negatives and two twos. So that gives me a positive answer at the bottom. All right, so now in this case here, same thing. I'm gonna put a star here and a star here. These two are very tricky because this one's not got a parentheses around it. So first off, I'm gonna put a minus sign down. Then I'm gonna put a long fraction bar. And I'm gonna put two to, the, two to the two power on the bottom of the fraction bar because of this word right here, reciprocal. And then put a one on top. And then you're gonna put uh, uh, negative, the answer is gonna be negative one over four, okay? So there's my answer there. See, look at the difference between these two answers. You don't wanna mess up those symbols. Uh, you get the, the wrong answer in that case. Now let's, uh, let's do reverse distributive property. So we're gonna do one to the negative two over two to the negative two. Uh, now we're gonna do reciprocal. Now this is the part where I wanted you to be earlier. I'm gonna take a fraction bar and I'm gonna reverse these two things here, okay? So you can't, there's no like bases, so you can't subtract the exponents here, okay? So you're gonna to have to just, uh, move the negatives to where they need to be. So this net one to the two moves down, okay? This two to the two moves up. And so my final answer is going to be four and done, okay? Easy breezy. Let's move to the next one. So same thing, we're gonna do reverse distributor property. Uh, this one's got a negative in front. I, I want y'all to understand that. So it's the same as the last time. So I'm gonna put, Put that negative out in front, it's gonna stay there locked in place. And then we're gonna do one to the negative two, two to the negative two. Keep that negative locked in place. Reciprocal, two to the two, one to the two. Just like we did last time, we flip one to the two on the bottom, two to the two on the top. And that turns out to be a negative four for that answer, okay? That was tricky. So, um, lots of lots of information this morning, okay? Going really fast uh, because this is a little bit easier topic than uh, what we've been covering. And we've got about six minutes left. So I think we might be able to wrap this uh, section up today. And um, this is section one one out of the sec second semester. Now, um, after these four questions, I'm going to call it a day and move on to my geometry class. And so we'll talk about that the rest of uh, one, two tomorrow. So I have one, two printed off the next section. So I'm just gonna do this without talking a lot. Okay, I'm just gonna go for it. Here we go.
Okay, I'm going to stop right there. I know that was a lot of information. I may go back over this tomorrow and kind of hit the high points of what I did, uh, especially right here where I have the negative. That's three negatives. So really that's negative one in front of everything here. So I uh, raised negative one to the third power. So negative one to the third power is just negative one. That's how that happens. So we'll go back over that tomorrow. Let me give you some time to to look at this. If there's any questions before we leave, uh, just type them in the chat or email me and I'll try to get back with you as soon as I can. We're moving on to geometry and uh, off we go.